personality, sure. And they say, if we can control these personalities, if we can pick the personalities that people will respond to, or we can cultivate these personalities, then we can stay in control of the machine. Mm. It went from them being able to successfully do that to somewhere along the line, artists or talented people and the machinery saying, we don't even have to cultivate personalities anymore. Mm -hmm. We can cultivate personas. So it went from culture to the cult of personality to the cult of persona. Mm -hmm. To get people to believe that so-and-so is this. To get spokespeople or representatives for a lifestyle or an idea that they may not even subscribe to themselves. They can sell it though. They can make Completely. it appealing to a, to a mass of people. And there's, there are great rewards for agreeing to do that. You know, it's, it's, it's gone from being, this is my art that reflects, this is my work that reflects my history, my personal life, my struggles, my ambitions, my dreams, to this is my persona mm. as it is attached to a product or a lifestyle or something that you can Two buy. Two intertwined, many of them. And there are loads of products. There are lots of, they reward you for it. Completely. If you just say, it has nothing to do with me, I'm just a model. It's like I trips. Put, I it's put like, on the know. clothes, I stand in the pose, mm. they pay me a check. Mm. So what effect does that have on the community? Oh my God, it's, it's if there's no voice of dissent, if there's no imagination, not even, let's just leave dissent alone. If there's no earnestness, if there's no truth mm. in what artists and talented people do, if it's all about the gesture, then it, then it's telling people there's no room for your imagination. There's no use being imaginative. Follow the rules. And what about the individual in terms of the collective? It's not about that. It's about conforming. And if you see someone who is a creative person doing that, then what energy might you have to criticize your local government yeah. or your state government? or or to just have any sort of opinion about what's going on around you in the world, to say, to use your common sense to say, well, that may be a prevailing practice, but that doesn't mean that it's useful yeah. or, or necessary. If you see people who are supposed to be imaginative people, creative people, not being that, mm -hmm. I think that the long-term effect is that the masses in general just find themselves being less creative, less imaginative, and creativity and imagination are integral in creating change mm. in the world. I mean, you know, you, you, you need that spark. Yeah. If, well, if he could do that, then I could do it. So you know, if, I should ask, do you think um, MTV is any form of kind of empathy or not? Because you were asking about that thing. I mean, has it got the stage reaction? Yeah, I mean, is it, is it organized? The, the, the corporations have successfully bribed many charismatic, charismatic personalities and figures with money and flattery. And a lot of times it's not even with money, but they're really bribing them with is a perception of social access. Mm -hmm. You are invited into an exclusive club. Mm -hmm. You get to sit in the velveteen chair. And for some people, that's a very intoxicating of course. Yeah. proposal. Because I'm especially 
if you come from an ignored or marginalized part of the world and now somebody's treating you like this rare and precious thing. Now the 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 fine print of that is like it's better to be and this is a quote from an article about Josephine Baker that I read. It is better to be treated like a rare and precious thing as opposed to a horrible, ugly one. Mm. But it's still to be treated like a thing. There's no real human temperature in that. It's, oh, you're so exotic. Yeah. But you're, you're a caricature. Mm. You're a beautiful caricature, but you're not a well, you're human. You're commodified. Yeah, you're not a, a human being. Mm. And it's just that kind of hip hop will find its center again. At the moment, a lot of its biggest names and most charismatic personalities are dizzy and disoriented off of success and what they uh, what they perceive to be mainstream approval and acceptance. Mm -hmm. Which the irony is that the culture came into prominence without any of that. Yeah. Almost came anti that. Rejecting that. Yeah. Like we don't care what you think, what it doesn't it matter. To, to push it again to the side, you know, where, where are the leaders gonna come from? Well, there are a lot. There are lots of leaders. There are lots of artists who are doing those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But when they when they submit themselves to certain forms of machinery, mm -hmm. as television or radio, then it's a perfect opportunity for you to be suppressed. And what happened, I think, is that we started to accept mainstream notions of success. Mm. Being on a top Billboard artist was not even in anyone's field of vision. It was just about being able to make music that was relevant to to your center. Mm. Then your center started being relevant to the the center, the mainstream center, mm. and as a result, people started modifying themselves and you know, changing appearances to appeal to the old sense of sensibility. Yeah. And uh, now, if you weren't on the top 10 and Billboard, and this was, this came from inside the culture, we adopted this. Yeah. If you weren't that type of artist, you weren't relevant. If you couldn't have that sort of mainstream appeal, you, you didn't matter. And it almost it had to be that you were lobbying or campaigning for the widest audience possible, which is harmful because it turns it into like a tournament type of atmosphere mm. where you're competing against not only your own contemporaries, but other genres and you it, it, it got to, it's, it's got to be a, up, it's like right. a very gladiator type of atmosphere, yeah. you know. Uh, what happens to the message in there, you know, I mean, this is the whole thing. If it's getting split up that much, to maintain a pretty solid message must be near impossible. Well, you know, if people, it's really simple, if, you know, the radio stations won't play certain records. And they only play roughly 35 to 40 records in any given rotation anyway. Can I have one? Yes. Yeah, sure. So, uh... This is the first time I was smoking camera. I apologize to my nan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I'm trying to like it. Um, so they only play a, a certain amount of records, and they, um... They say they don't play certain records because, well, that's not what people want to hear. Yeah. This says who? says the program director, who usually works for some large broadcast corporation. If you take that pie enough, if you've got media owned by like four companies, how, you know, all of the media in this com country, if it's owned by like, you know, maybe four major companies, and how, 
how do you get the message out there if there's you just have to do it and you have to just go directly to the people I mean you can't depend on MTV or Hot 97 I mean I've attempted to mm. I've attempted to do that and I've had really good records I mean I got yeah. I've been nominated for Grammys and for Gold Records. And, and I've had program directors even tell me, Most, I like you. I love your music, but I can't. It doesn't fit into our format. The format is predetermined. Yeah. And it's pretty predictable. Everybody says, everybody makes it like it's not that premeditated. You're being conspiracy theorist. And it's like, if it's not that premeditated, why is it so predictable? Yeah. If it's, if it's not premeditated, how come it is so reliably uniform? So homogenized. It's sex, violence, uh, love songs, glamour, dance. That's it. Stuff. There's no, there's no real information on these stations. So as a result, there's no real information in the music. And that's not what they're about. That's not what their programming mandate is about. Their programming mandate is about surface pop culture. And that's really problematic for us as a community because the only culture that we have in this country is the ones that we create. Mm -hmm. Now the people who create culture have been bribed and yeah. co-opted sometimes consciously and even worse, unconsciously mm -hmm. by these huge corporations to say the only way that we'll take your message mm -hmm. to the mass is if you represent what we are comfortable with. Yeah. Seeing your community or seeing your demographic, which is a really kind of sterile terminology for people and a community. It's like, we're well, demographic. We're comfortable with you representing this to them. We like it when we're comfortable with that imagery. Mm. And anything outside of that, we don't, we're so, hesitant on. So do you already have to have media? I mean, the problem is, is that, you know, when you've got someone like Mumia, who's, you know, now it is, you know, you kind of have to be looking for him to find him. You kind of mm. have to be, you know, I mean, he's there, he's accessible on the web, you know, his, his commentaries are there every week. But, you, you know, if you're not looking for him, he's very hard to find. So does that make it a problem in terms of, do you already have to have media exposure to be able to make that message? Or do you just got to keep plugging away? Well, I mean, these are, these are, those are type of scientific types of questions. Um, do I think that... I think the certain it's, it's, messages... Because it's, it's just, a, I've, you know, I found Mumia through, you know, I mean, from my mom, you know, she's, right. she's political, you know, so, you know, I've sort of been raised in that, but if I, if I hadn't been, I don't know if I ever would have known about it, do you know what I mean? I think that there's a bit of advice that a, a writing professor that, and a great novelist, Victor Laval, gave me. I asked him what he tells his students, and he told, he told me that he tells his students to write as if they're the only ones that would understand. Right. I like that. <laughs> and, and in doing that, they will become universal. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies to people like Mamiya or people who have a real message who may not, who for whatever reason have been stymied by the mass media or rejected or persecuted. Is this somehow in a way that we may not even be able to measure. Mm. There's not, there's, there's far less empirical than we could imagine. Yeah. The message just gets out just on the virtue of what it has to say. True, yeah, very true. And some people might view that as idealistic, but I sincerely believe that, and there's so many examples mm. of that. Uh, I find that Actually, people who are less concerned with that end up getting it. You know, you get guys like Dylan or Bob Marley. Those weren't the, that wasn't the aim. The aim was to make 
their most honest work. Yeah. And because they did it, it just gets airborne, and it's mm -hmm. this there's something else. That's the thing about information is that it's really the truth is a form of magic, mm -hmm. and it just it finds its way to people mm -hmm. without a machine, without approval from the gatekeeper. How did that happen? It just did. Yeah, it just did.